Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Shadowrun Crossfire, which is a new cooperative deck building game set in the Shadowrun universe. I'm going to be trying to do a Shadowrun through of this game today so you guys can decide whether it is a game for you. Now, I'm going to be doing it as a two-player run. I, over here, am Rado the, the Dwarf, Jen is Jennifer the Troll, and in this particular game, I'm going to be a street samurai, or the street samurai, because there are four roll cards in this game. No matter how many people are playing, one to four, all the roll cards will be used. So my role is street samurai, Jen's role is the face, kind of like a con man, street smarts person. But even though we're only playing a two-player game, the other roles get assigned to us. So I have Decker as a role, and Jen has Mage as a role. Although I should say, we don't get any benefits of having those rolls. We just have those cards in case a card comes up, like an enemy card that says, the Decker takes damage. And that means me, I'm the Decker, but I don't get any of the Decker benefits. Uh, that's just kind of like a little backup thing just to make the game work with two players. Right. <clears throat> There's so much to talk about. Well, first of all, in case you don't know, Shadowrun itself is a very, very popular oh, what would you call it, um, a, a fictional universe that's been around forever. It's, you know, there's novels and tons of games and comic books and all kinds of stuff. It's basically a dystopic future, kind of like Blade Runner or, oh, I don't know, Johnny Mnemonic, that kind of thing, you know, a future where corporations run the world and there's high technology everywhere and, and people are kept down and, and, and um, there's rebels and there's cyberpunks and all that kind of stuff. But mixed into it is swords and sorcery fantasy because in this world, at some point in the future, like in 2010 or something like that, magic reappeared in the world and people started being born as trolls and orcs and goblins and dragons showed up and people can cast spells. So it's a really interesting you know, environment to set a game in. And in this game, players are you know, the, the plucky underground rebels trying to fight for the man and, uh, you know, and, and do stuff by going on shadow runs. Although what that means is in this game, we're going to be fighting a lot of obstacles while building our decks to try and stay alive. And oh my gosh, it'll be a challenge to stay alive because this game is rough. It beats you up. But I'm going to do a run through anyway and so you guys can see how well we do. So a couple more little setup things. It's weird the game doesn't come with a first player marker because it's really important to keep track of first player. So I'm just using one of Jen's lovely glass pieces for that. Jen will be the first player. And the reason for that is because as a troll, she starts with a lot more hit points than me. She starts with seven hit points, so she's a bit tougher. And me as a dwarf, I only start with five hit points. So it's generally a good idea to have your toughest character be the first player because chances are, there's no guarantee, but chances are they're going to draw more of the obstacles. So they'll be in the line of fire a bit more. So that's why Jen is up. Now, trolls start with two bucks. Dwarves are rich. They start with five bucks, or I don't know how to pronounce it, yen or yuan or something like that, but bucks. <coughs> trolls also start with a hand of three cards. One, two, three, from their deck, starting deck of seven. And dwarfs start with two, one, two. Although actually, I can't, I can't start drawing my cards yet because there's a little bit more setup that has to be done. Because this is a game that is all about permanence. As you play, you earn experience points, or what are called karma points. And the, you know, as you go through session after session after session, you earn more karma, and then every once in a while you can use that karma to buy permanent upgrades. And so far, Jen and I, we've played Rado and Jennifer here, the troll and the dwarf enough, that we've each earned six karma. And that means we've each bought one special ability. I've bought fundamentals and Jen has bought shopping agent. We'll talk about her special ability in a second. But my fundamentals mean at the start of the game, add one basic card of any color to your starting deck. So while normally as a street samurai, I would have four quick shots, one street smarts, one mana, and one mark card, that's, that's my starting deck, I get to add one more. And I think I will add another green card, another deck card, be, you know, another mark card, because seeing as how I have the decker roll, 
green enemies, green obstacles are going to be more likely to hit me, so it's good for me to have more green. Plus, both Jen and I are weak in green, so I mean, I could go on ahead and choose to take another gun so I become even stronger in my street samurai roll, but I'm going to try and balance myself out a little bit more by throwing another. So I have one extra card. I have a starting deck of eight instead of seven. And so now I got to shuffle that. So let's go ahead and slip that in. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Never ruck or fuffle. This is my shuffling song. Bing, bing. And you know what? Hey, while we're at it, since I've got the camera down, let's go ahead and shuffle all the decks one more time. Here is the black market, which is the place that, because this is a deck builder, we can buy more and more and more stuff to add to our decks as the game goes along. This is the crossfire event deck. This is full of really bad, terrible things that will mess us up over the course of this adventure that we have to watch out for. And these become like you know global events that, have, that often affect everybody. Sometimes you're lucky and they're not particularly bad. Sometimes they can be really debilitating. And then here's the deck of, ops, of level one obstacles. You can tell they're level one because they've got one bullet hole. And these are all bad guys, security guards, weird, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And then there's the level two obstacle deck, which, man, we really don't want to have to run across anybody in here. But before it's over, we probably will. Okay, so there we go. Everything's all shuffled up. Probably should have done that before starting to film, but say lovey. Alrighty. So, now, remember, as, all that, uh, as a dwarf, I start with a hand of two cards which is not very good. Uh, <clears throat> only two cards means probably in the first round of this game, I'm not going to be able to get much done. That's the real downside to a dwarf. You don't have much of a big hand. When I had upgraded, I thought seriously about giving myself the upgrade power that lets me draw an extra card at the beginning of the game, but I ultimately decided having a bigger deck was better. Now, I also start with five bucks. Jen, as a troll, is poor, starts with two. However, in a two-player game, to balance the whole thing out, because we don't have players three and four, everybody gets one additional buck. So Jen actually starts with three, and I start with six. All right, so we are set up. We've got our starting hands. We've got our money. We've got our roles assigned. We've got our health. Now, we are going to be playing today through a crossfire mission. And you know, crossfire missions, nine times out of 10, when you play this game, you're going to be playing a crossfire mission because it's in the title, Shadowrun Crossfire. This crossfire mission defines the standard rules. Uh, that you're going to play every single time you play the game. However, it's interesting, the game does come with a few more missions over there. But those are kind of more special case or variants. And really, well, some of them are so high level, you can't really do it. Like the dragon fight, you can't fight that dragon until you've played this game a lot and leveled up a lot because he's just too powerful. So you spend a lot of your early days running crossfire missions to earn karma, to level up, and so on. So, now, the crossfire mission itself, there's not much of a setup. The job. Getting in was easy, just like Mr. Johnson promised. But you've got heavy company on the way out. That's it. Pretty much the entire job here is escape. That is our mission goal. We are going to face off against obstacles in three scenes, although I call them waves. Three waves of bad guys who are trying to stop us from escaping, because we've already finished whatever the job is. We're just trying to get out now alive. And there's rules here that say what to do. In the first scene or first wave, the, we flip obstacles equal to the number of runners. There's two runners, so we're going to flip two obstacles. Let's see. First one is a light combat drone. Now, this is a green card, which means since I've got the green roll, I've got the decker roll, it's going to come over and hit me. However, though, as you can see, it has a flipped ability. And what that means... Oh, wow, that's a bad start. But you know what? All these obstacles are a bad start. The first thing i got to do is flipped. When this card is flipped, when I first see it, before it gets assigned to somebody, I have to discard one card. Ouch. And I only started with two cards, so this is not starting off well. i got to get rid of one of my cards already. And ba -ba 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 -ba, I guess I'll get rid of the... Mm. I'd really wish I could see what the other card coming is, but it probably doesn't matter. I'll just go ahead and get rid of this mark. Because actually, I can see... Oh, wait, no, 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 you know what? No, I'm going to keep the mark and I'm going to get rid of my quick shot. Because I can see this thing requires a green damage, which my mark card, my cyber mark card, can deliver. So I'm going to keep that just in case I get a chance to hit this guy. We'll see what happens. All right, and so there's two come out. The first one came for me, and that means the second one, whatever it is, is going to go after Jen, and let's see what it is. It is a gang leader. Okay. Now, when and this one has a flipped ability too. Not all of them do, but, but we happen to get two flipped abilities. Each runner places four cards from the top of their deck 
into their discard pile. If a runner has less than four cards, uh, they don't reshuffle to discard more. Okay, so basically our decks are empty. And, or well, not empty, but you know, this gang leader makes us dig through our deck. So I gotta discard four cards. One, two, three, four. And now really, at the beginning of the game, that's not so bad. One, two, three, four. But, so Jen has no, she's gone through it. If later in the game this guy had come out, it could be a real problem because I might be just about to draw some really awesome card I bought and then this guy forces me to discard it. But at the beginning of the game, our deck is just full of really simple low level stuff. So that flipped ability wasn't really that big of a deal. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got our, our obstacles that are preventing us from escaping. We've got our starting money. Um, Jen's got a starting hand of three two street smarts and a quick shot and I've got a starting hand of one which is not very good ouch but you know what like I said the dwarf very rarely has a good first round anyway so at the end of the day it's not the it's not that bad that I lost one of my cards chances are with only two cards I wasn't going to get much done regardless so strictly speaking it's better that this thing hit me than hit Jen because Jen's got enough cards to actually do some damage so um, we've got our obstacles and we will defeat the first wave once both of these has been taken out. Then we go on to the second wave. And if we defeat the second wave, we'll then go on to the third wave. And if we defeat the third wave, we win. And um, fingers crossed, because ah, well, we'll see what happens. All right. So now, the first thing that happens in a... Okay, Jen is the first player. Now, the first thing that happens is when it's the first player's turn, we draw and resolve a crossfire event. So every time Jen's turn comes around, we'll have to deal with one of these. And again, these are bad, bad news. However, in a two-player game, again, to make up for the balance that we don't actually have four players and so we don't have as many cards in play and we, we basically we just aren't as powerful a team. With only two of us, we have a lot less combinatorial abilities. The game balances that out by saying for the first two rounds, we do not have to draw any crossfire cards. So normally, Jen would have to draw a crossfire card. We deal with it. It would be a terrible, terrible event. But right now, we get off scot-free. And now it's Jen's turn. Speaking of which, Jen just walked up and I don't know what she would like to say. I just feel that this is a more thematically appropriate <laughs> first player marker. Okay. That's all. Okay. Um, oh, did you just make this today? No. Or, okay. Uh, this is uh, another. Uh, I was another one of Jen's glass markers. She's recently started making little baby dragons with little baby dragon wings. Hello. Um, right. So that is our first player marker. Very appropriate for the show. I mean, heck, it's even a red one, just like in the logo. How nice is that? Very, very cool. Okay, so we are ready to start playing now. It is Jen's turn, and let's see. First thing Jen gets to do is play cards. She has a hand of three cards. She can play none of them or all of them. And now the beginning cards we have, like I said, we're not... For, oh, oh, wait, wait, there's one more thing I forgot to do as far as setup. There's no black market. During this escape, we're going to be using our money to buy more cards to put into our deck because this is a deck builder after all. So let's pull out the black market. One, two, three... Four, five, six. Now, normally in a black market, the black market always has six cards ready to buy. However, Jen has the special power of shopping agent, which increases the black market by one. So for us, there are actually seven cards to buy. And that's really, really handy because you know, life or death is choices are made about which cards to buy, and having one extra one, it you know <laughs> could make or break us. All right, so we have a black market. Jen will be able to, we each get a chance to buy from the black market, but that'll be a little bit later in her turn. First thing she has to decide to do is, is she going to play any of your cards? And if so, which ones? And if so, where? <coughs> now, you can see all these cards in the black market. They have a lot of special abilities. Uh, Stun Bolt, reveal the top card from your deck. Put it back at the top of your deck. X equals the uh, revealed cards cost. Or coordinate assault, choose another runner. That runner draws one card and then immediately plays a card. Stuff like that. So there's a bunch of cool special abilities, but every card in the game up in the top left corner has an icon that indicates how much and what type of damage that card does when played. Because what we're going to do is we play cards and then we use the special abilities of those cards, whatever they might be. Now, our starting cards have no special abilities, so we skip the, the using special abilities thing. And after we play the cards, we immediately go to applying damage to whichever obstacles we hit. And now, even though this guy's attacking me, Jen, can, we both have access to hit either of these bad guys. Although the gang leader's only going after Jen, the uh, combat drone is only going after me. 
So, Jen has to choose what cards is she going to play to apply damage. And now that requires some thought too, because if you look, every card has a, a order of how you apply damage. You have to apply, you have to take out this first space before you can move on to the second, before you can move on to the third, as an example. So, Jen needs to um, use do red damage, which is delivered by street smarts. Uh, red damage is kind of like skills, contacts, con artists. You know, it, 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 Jen's not necessarily going to um, you know attack this guy. She might use her street smarts to call somebody else in to attack her, or to blackmail the guy, or who knows what. Um, but still, at the end of the day, functionally, it just means Jen can play one of her street smarts to do a damage to this guy. And I, so I think she's definitely going to play one street smart. Now, to be able to hit the next level in one fell swoop, in one card play, or you know, in, in, in one turn, Jen has to be able to do five points of damage. And that's a lot. And Jen can't do it. She only has three cards. The most she could possibly do is three. And now she only has two because she's played one of them. So she can't really take this guy to the next level. And coming over to this light combat drone who starts at a four, Jen would need to be able to do four damage to hit him. So that's it. Jen is just going to play one card, hits the gang leader, and since it's the, and now, so Jen has done playing cards. She played cards, it had no special ability, and now Jen applies damage. So she's applying this one Street Smarts damage to the gang leader, and boom, he is covered up. Now, we only have to hit him twice more, but that second one's going to be a doozy. We have to hit him with five damage, and that's going to be tough. We'll see how that goes. So, <clears throat> And then take damage. Obstacles strike back. So this guy is now going to hit Jen for one. And we don't have very many hit points. Jen started with seven, I started with five. Jen's already down to six. Now um, draw and buy cards. If uh, at this point, you have three or fewer cards in your hand, and Jen does, she only has two cards left, you can draw two cards. So now, sorry, <laughs> it's always fun to do a deck builder run through because I got to shuffle cards a lot. So let's go ahead and shuffle Jen's deck back up. Okay, since it got emptied. And Jen now gets to draw two more cards. Street Smarts and Mana. Now, th with four cards, she has enough cards to actually do four points of damage. She could hit the first level of my, f of my dr combat drone, but she cannot hit the first level of that gang member. But in addition to drawing cards, she also gets to buy cards. And if we come up here, Jen has three bucks she could buy something from the market, and, I, and you better bet she is. Let's see, let's, let's divide it by cost. So these things both cost two. Ooh, Ooh a mana card, that shouldn't be in there. That's a, a starter card. Let's put a, right, there we go. All right, so here, these cost two, this costs three, 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 four, and five, okay. Now Jen has three bucks, so she could afford negotiation, the room sweeper, she can't afford coordinate assault or press the advantage, or she could afford black market contacts, icon grab, or stun bolt. Ah, this is a make or break decision, what she's going to buy. Let's see here. Now, Jen, as I said up front, is strongest in red cards. And so the first element of the decision she has to make about what card to buy is, is she going to buy a card that increases her con man face roll by getting more red cards? Because you can see there's two different red cards she could choose from, and those would enhance her abilities in red. Often, um, yeah, like, a, like actually, this negotiation is a perfect example. The next time you buy a skill card this turn, pay $1 less for each skill card you played this turn. So, playing a negotiate, if Jen plays negotiation, that means on that turn, she'll be able to buy other um, skill cards, red cards, for cheaper if on a turn where she played a bunch of red cards. So this combos really nicely with her big starting hand of cards. Also, interestingly, Jen can use this as an assist. Instead of playing it on her turn to get that ability, she can play it during my turn. The current runner, you know, when it's my turn, can buy for one less than normal and um, and does dam and gets damage. Oh, now that's pretty cool. So if Jen has this, she can play it on my turn and uh, red and a and a colorless damage. So that means I could do up to three damage in one turn. Now. Oh, that's a shame. If I still hadn't discarded my card, I'd be able to do two damage, plus Jen could assist me and do two more, and I could hit the first level of my combat drone. <sighs> right, anyway, now I've also got black market contacts. This would save Jen some money, because it only costs two over three, and it's and it does damage. It, you know, it does one point damage. And now here's the thing. No matter what, if Jen buys one card next round, she'll be able to do five points of damage and hit the second level of this gang leader. 
So that's good news. Now, if Jen gets this, you can buy a card from the black market anytime you want. So if Jen sees something out there and she's got the money and she wants to buy it now so she can use it in a fight, because when you buy a card, it immediately goes into your hand, that can be really handy too. But you know what? I think Jen's going to pay a little bit more. She's going to pay the three bucks. Oh, wait, 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 no, no. We actually didn't talk about the other stuff. She could also, now she could go against her color of red, which is strong, and instead try to branch out. She could make herself stronger in green, Icon Grab. Um, if you play another hacking card anytime during this turn, Icon Grab also deals additional damage. So it can, instead of just doing one damage, it could do two damage and it gives you a lot of choices. Now, I don't think Jen should buy this because I've already started to develop a secondary line, a secondary strength in green. If anybody's going to buy this, it should be me because I'm stronger in green than Jen. But Jen could also buy Stun Bolt, um, which is only cost two, or no, it, I'm sorry, it costs three. So, Reveal the top card of your deck. So it does one mana, one blue damage, plus additional damage. And the additional damage is based on what you draw from your deck. Now, chances are everything in Jen's deck yeah, only has a value of one. So this will pretty much only do two damage. But as her deck gets full of stuff, if, if her deck gets full of higher level, more valuable cards, this could do a lot more damage. But here's the thing. I'm Mr. Moneybags. I'm probably going to be the guy who's buying more stuff than Jen. So I don't think it makes sense for her either. So Jen is going to go back to the original plan. She is going to spend all three of her money and get negotiation. Boom. All right, and that goes straight in her hand. And now at the end of the turn, well, it's the end of the turn. The runner to your left is a starting player. A round is over, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so my turn. First thing I'm going to do is play cards. And because of this drone that made me discard, I've only got one card. I can do one point of damage. It doesn't do any good. It doesn't hit this four. It doesn't hit this five. So I'm going to skip that. There is no reason for me to play any cards. Like I said, when you're playing the dwarf, you got to assume most times... Although, remember, if Jen wants to on my turn, she could assist me, and that would do two more points of damage. If I had one more card, it would be tempting. But you know what? I think the reality is, Jen and I, we need to focus our fire and take out this gang leader faster. That's really kind of the most important thing. So, I'm going to skip playing cards, which means I don't apply any damage, and now I'm going to take damage. Boom. I've just taken my first point of damage. I'm down to four hit points. Now I get to draw and buy cards. I, I don't have more... I, you know, if you have four cards, you can't draw. I have less than four cards, so I get to draw. One, two. Nice! Now that is nice business, because here's what's going to happen. On Jen's next turn, she's got her five points of damage. She'll be able to hit the level two or I'm sorry, the, the, the five. She'll be able to do the five points of damage to get past this. Then we just need to do one more red damage. I just drew some street smarts. So I will be, Jen will set him up and I will finish him off next round. All right, but we'll have to worry about that next round. Okay, so let's see. Anyway, so I've drawn my hand back up and now I can buy cards and I've got six bucks. Oops, I forgot. When Jen bought a card, a new one should have come out immediately. Oh, the Katana, my favorite card as a street sweeper. Or as a street samurai <laughs> um, next to the Remington Room Sweeper. Okay, wow. So I've got six bucks to spend. I've got enough to buy two cards, and I need to think about what cards I'm going to buy. No, I don't. I know what cards I'm going to buy. I'm going to spend, I'm going to blow all my cash. I'm going to spend all six bucks. I'm going to buy this katana because this katana powers up every single weapon card I have. And I'm, over half of my deck, or no, exactly half of my deck is weapon cards. This katana, not only does it do two points of damage itself, but it makes every weapon card do an additional point of damage also. It is awesome! So that's very, very cool. And I'm paying my, another, or, so a new card comes out. And oh, it's another icon grab. Nice. My other two bucks went to buying an icon grab. Because remember, as I said, I'm stronger in green, so these icon grabs really benefit you because they combo with your other green cards. So let's get that. And boom, at the end of my first turn, I got five cards. I am a mean, lean, obstacle fighting machine now. So let's draw a new black market card, a sniper rifle, four bucks. Okay, <coughs> that was the end of the first round. We're moving on to the second round. Now, Normally, at the it's back to Jen. She's the first player. We would have to discard the old Crossfire event card and draw a new one. But in a two-player game, you get a reprieve. So on the second round, we still don't have to draw a Crossfire. But on the third round, Crossfire is going to start hitting us back. So anyway, Jen's turn. First thing she's going to do, she's going to play cards. I'm telling you right now, she's going to play all five of these cards. And they're all coming right for that gang leader. But before she does, negotiation. The next time you buy a skill card this turn, pay... Oh no, this is terrible. Ah, uh, See, so if Jen wanted to buy a card that... 
Oh, pay one less? Actually, can you get discarded? Can cards cost nothing? Can they be free? Or do they always have to cost one? I don't remember there being anything about costing one. I think this is going to work out pretty well. Let's just double check this really quick in the rules. To the rules. Um, buying cards, buying cards, taking damage. Draw and buy cards. Uh, you now buy cards. You may buy any number of cards as long as you have enough money. It's black market shows us if you earn me. Some cards abilities let you. Second one you do. If black market deck comes out, shuffle the deck. In addition, you're told to reveal something. Yep. Awesome. This is going to work out great. So. Now, first of all, Jen is playing all five cards, but before she applies damage, that's the next step, she uses the abilities. Negotiation has an ability, which is the next time Jen buys a skill card, a red card, pay one less for each skill that you played this turn. Jen has played one, two, three skill cards. That means Jen can buy for free a skill card with a value of up to two uh, or up to three. So Jen can get a, a skill card for free. That is awesome. All right. So anyway, so Jen's playing all this. We've taken now. This means Jen won't be able to assist me. She's throwing that opportunity away, but that's okay because she's used her ability, which means she can. Um, she's negotiating with somebody in addition to all this fighting, and so that means she is going to um, get that ability a little bit later. So she's done five points of damage. Boom! The gang leader is down to one last hit. Okay. So now. The gang leader strikes back. Jen takes another point of damage. Now, Jen can draw and buy cards. Her hand is empty, so she gets to draw two cards. Street Smarts and her mark. And now, she gets to buy cards. And remember, she gets to spend... If she's buying red cards, even though she has no money, she can get... Oh, oh, it's a shame. There's a, one that costs two, one that costs four, and one that costs five. If only there was one that cost three, she'd get that. But Jen basically just got this black market contacts for free and it goes straight in her hand. Okay, there we go. That was her, she negotiated to get some black market contracts. I think thematically you have to think of these guys chasing us. This is all not happening just at one moment. We are being hunted by the gang leader and the light combat drum. We are being chased throughout the city. We are trying to find refuge every night as they keep tracking us down. And every once in a while they find us and they hurt us. Every once in a while we find them and, they, and we hit them. But we also always have this downtime where we can sneak off into the shadows and try to regroup. But you know what? Within a couple of hours they'll find us again and they'll hit us some more. That's thematically what is going on as we are on the run in a crossfire mission. So anyway, so Jen is finished with that. It's the end of her turn. Over to me, my turn. First of all, I think I'm going to play some cards. I got a lot of cards to play. Oh, it sucks though. I wish I had all... Now, see, once again, this light combat drone, which I thought wasn't that big a deal, it was a big deal because it made me get rid of all my quick shot cards. <sighs> because every one of those quick shot cards' values would have been doubled by that katana. And as it is, my hand only has one. Now let's take a look and see what I got here. I've got Icon Grab, which means if I play another hacking card anytime during this turn, and I've got one, I've got my mark, that means this thing will also deal an, um, one more damage, either black, blue, or red, my choice. So this thing is going to do two points of damage, three points of damage, four, five, six, seven, because the katana is going to bump this up to seven, eight. I can do eight points of damage this round. And I'm going to do some. I'm, 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 going to, I'm going to aim to misbehave here. Let's see here. Now, first of all, I know I'm going to play this Street Smarts. It doesn't give me any abilities, so I don't care about that. But it does do one point of red damage. And I'm using that, boom, on Jen's enemy to finish this gang leader. This gang leader is toast. Goes into the discard pile, but before it does, we get to split five bucks between me and Jen. Since I delivered the killing blow, I get the, um, the, I get the bigger share. So I get three bucks, which I'll be able to use to buy stuff this turn, and Jen gets two. All right, there we go. So one of our obstacles is gone. Hooray! Now, can I finish this? I don't think I can, because he's four, five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> oh. Hold on a second. Maybe, hold on a second then. I can do eight points of damage. Let's put all this money back. So I got to think about this a little bit more. Instead of just finishing Jen's guy off, because Jen's guy has already done his point of damage this round. So I think it's kind of wasteful. If I could finish this combat drone off before it hits me, that's a point of damage I don't take. And what was it? It's four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points of damage. If I recall correctly, I can do eight points of damage. I can take this sucker down because Jen, on her turn, she has street smarts or black market. She could finish her own guy. That's what we're doing. Light combat drone, 
you are toast. You are going down and we'll get to split six bucks instead of five. So let's do it. So <clears throat> that means I'm gonna have to play all my cards. So first of all, I'm gonna play a mark which does one point of damage. And because it's hacking, I'm going to play Icon Grab, so it combos. It's a second point of damage plus something else. Black, um, blue, or red. Now, um, let's see. I need to do green. The, green. the green is taken care of by this. I also need to do at least one point of black damage, and then everything else can be colorless, which means it could come from any source. So I've already taken care of my green. Let's say that my other point from this is a black. So I've taken care of the black now. So I've done one, two, three points of damage of the eight I've got to do, but I'm not done yet. Next up, I'm going to play this katana. That is two points of damage and its ability plus one to every other weapon. So I'm going to play this weapon, which means that's one, two, three, four. And finally, I'm going to use some street smarts. I'm going to call in an old favor to finish this drone off. So just to recap one more time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, um, let's say, the, you know, these four points of damage, the katana, the quick shot, and the street smarts, they hit the first four. They did the first really big bad hit. Fine. Then, this mark got through the green. That's cool. So, the, these guys went, and then the mark went. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Have I added it up right? Have I done some bad math here? Let's try this one more time. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Right. So there's. Oh, whoops. Oh, yeah. This is it. These two things the katana. So I found the, the combat drone and I engaged. I shot at it and I sliced it with the katana. That was four points of damage. Hit the first thing. Then I used my mark to hack into it. Did another point of damage. Got through that. Then I used some street smarts. Called in an old buddy. That did one point of damage. Got through that. And then um, I used an icon grab. Um, which, combined with my mark, did two more points of damage. One of them was a gun, so it hit through the gun, physical damage, and then one of them was um, one last hack, and boom. Good night, Gracie. Light combat roan. Kaboom. Blew up. We get six bucks. That is much better. And the nice thing is, I don't take any damage. See, this game is all about doing great combos, making the right choices, because I almost did a really stupid choice there. Because now, I have finished applying damage, I don't have any damage to take because there's no bad guys. Buy and draw cards. First of all, I get to draw cards because my hand is empty, so I get to shuffle my discard pile <clears throat> to make a new deck, and then I will draw two cards. And I have three bucks, so I could buy something too. Hopefully, there's something worth buying. All right, draw a little bit more, uh, or shuffle a little bit more. Shuffle, 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 never ever fuffle. This is my shuffling song. Boop, boop. Okay, let's draw two cards. Let's see what I get. There's my spell card and a quick shot. All right. Eh, not the most exciting, but uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, but I didn't get any of my cool special power cards, which is too bad. So now I get to buy. Oops. And don't forget, um, because of Jen's shopping agent, we have access to three things in the black market. Oh, I want covering fire. Covering fire is so awesome. It's an opportunity to heal. It's, um, there are several healing card types in the game, and that's one of them. Now I'm tempted. I've got three bucks. I could afford another icon grab, which would combo very nicely with my first icon grab. So I could really start, um, you know, you know, it's interesting, even though I'm strong in Street Samurai, I could really start becoming a very, very strong samurai slash hacker. And I could afford that right now. I could afford the stun bolt. The stun bolt is more interesting because now I've got some higher value cards in my deck, so it has a better chance of doing well. I could get the room sweeper, which does two points of damage right off the bat, plus um, deal. Oh, plus the other thing is, if there are multiple guys attacking me at once, because that can happen, I will hit everybody, not just the one guy I'm targeting, because it's a shotgun basically. Uh, deals damage to each obstacle facing one runner. So if everybody's attacking Jen, I could hit two guys that are attacking Jen, or I could hit two guys that are attacking me. And this thing does two points of damage. So if there are multiple guys, it could do four points of damage in one turn. Plus it's a weapon, so it could get powered up with my katana. Oh, so tough. Or I could just get another icon grab, save a little bit of money. Now here's the thing. We know on Jen's turn, she's going to finish this. So I'm about to get two more bucks. If I don't buy anything on my next turn, when I get two more bucks, I could get Covering Fire. And that would be pretty cool because then we could start healing and making up for the damage we've lost. But here's the deal. 
<clears throat> as part of the crossfire mission parameters, when you end a scene, and we will end this scene as soon as Jen defeats this gang leader. When you end a scene, if there are no, um, everybody gets to heal one. So I've, t I've only taken one point of damage. I'm going to heal that back up. Jen isn't going to take a point of damage from this guy. So I don't know, maybe healing isn't that important right now. It is, it's always important though, but these are all, all good choices. Oh my gosh, the stun bolt, the, or saving for the covering fire, or buying another icon grab, becoming a stronger... Let's see, now, if I bought the icon grab, let's just say that one, that means I'd have one dollar left over, and I'm about to get two more, so I'd have three more bucks. So on the following turn, I could still buy stun bolt or, or room sweeper. Oh, should I save up for the... Oh, folks. This is, a, this is a killer decision. This game is so full of tough decisions. I have never had to think this long and hard about what card to buy in Dominion. Or really any deck builder. Because the thing is, in this game, you get so few opportunities to buy. This game is over fast. It generally goes less than 10 rounds. So you only get a chance to buy maybe 4, 5, or 6 cards to add to your deck. Every purchase counts hugely. Oh, I don't know what to do. And you know what? I think, but I think you guys have an idea. Gosh, I've gone for 35 minutes. Let's go on ahead and stop right there. Um, and if you'd like, you can hit the button on screen to go to the uh, extended run through where you'll get to start seeing crossfire cards come out. Because on Jen's next turn, which is about to happen, we're going to see our first crossfire. You'll find out what I bought or didn't buy. And we'll see. We'll see if I get lucky and I can actually finish this. And if I don't, we'll see if one of us goes down and then the other one has to abort the mission and save the life of the first player, which is also very exciting if that happens. So if you'd like to watch that, hit the button that's on screen, go to the extended play. Otherwise, hit the uh, other button on screen, go to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.